Hello, I'm Martin Baker, Managing Director of Baker's Timber Buildings, and welcome to the definitive guide to planning permission and building regulations for garden buildings. We're talking about all types of uh, garden building from sheds all the way through to summer houses and the large high-end uh, garden rooms and offices uh, that we offer. Uh, Baker's Timber Buildings has uh, been founded in uh, 1985 by my father. We're a family company and as the name suggests back in the day we did make timber buildings um, like these you're seeing here our log cabins and, and summer houses were very popular back in the day. Uh, we now produce um, some beautiful buildings that we're going to show you here. Um, these are mainly now I have no timber inside, actually just a timber frame and then we use composite claddings and different types of household materials to now make buildings with a complete 10 year guarantee, 50 year life expectancy and essentially zero maintenance. They're more like an extension in the garden um, and, uh, and very low maintenance. Uh, and we can get this completed in around about three three weeks or so even with the base electrics as a complete package we still offer timber buildings so come and see us for any of your garden building requirements uh, we're down in the Bolney Grange industrial estate and you can follow us on, on our social media but today I want to focus on uh, your permitted development rights what is and isn't allowed it's always the first question that customers ask me and there's a lot of uh, misunderstanding particularly with the interaction with um, building control and that's what I'd like to do today so the first thing is we want to talk about the permitted development rights what you've actually got uh, your rights what you're allowed to do and if we talk we're using this basic plan building here a uh, plan drawing sorry see this is the house here that I'm circling imagine this is the front of the road this is all then the back garden with normal permitted development you could put your garden building absolutely anywhere if I make that a little bit smaller uh, let's just do that for you show that there well, we could actually even put this in the side there. So in normal permitted development, you can put your uh, garden building anywhere behind the building line. The building line is an invisible line uh, that sits around the front of the house, normally where the front doors are, and it kind of goes from house to house. It's, you can find it on the, on, on the planning department rules, but you have got this invisible line you have to build behind. You cannot build your sheds or garden offices in the front garden. It has to be behind the house. If you've got a conservation area, they're trying to conserve the view from the, uh, from the road, okay, so from here. Therefore, your buildings within permitted development need to go directly behind the house. That's in this kind of aspect there that you're seeing. You can't put them around the corners like that. That would not be allowed. Also, if you've got a conservation area, all your trees have got essentially a, a tree preservation order on them. So you need to, if you're going to cut down any trees, make sure that that's okay. If you're in an area of outstanding natural beauty or in a national park, there's a slight caveat to this, these rules. You have to build your building within 20 metres of the house. Assume uh, this drawing here that that is a 50 meter garden therefore you can only come up to around about there and you've got you've then got the whole building in its entirety from the back of the building needs to be 20 meters or, or, or less not more if your house is listed if your house is a flat or if your property is a flat or it's a masonette those three need planning you your permitted development rights are taken away a lot of people don't know that about flats and masonettes and it's a and it's a big one to know so if you're in a flat or a masonette you definitely do need planning also you might have permitted development rights taken away generally that's called an article 4 and if you've got that that means again that you've had the rights taken away and you do need uh, to get planning so that's the basic rules of the different terminology most of us about 95% of the UK pretty much sit in the standard permitted development rules and then we uh, have those kind of caveats around that so the next thing is to talk about is what are we allowed to do okay so now let's talk about what are the planning rules what your what are your permitted development rights okay let's go here we've got some nice little sketch up drawings to show you essentially the four different versions the first thing is is we want to have a building that is going to sit within zero to two meters away from the boundaries so this is when it's one or any part of the building is going to be between zero and two meters away we need to keep the building under 2.5 in its entirety if you see this apex building here that's 2.5 
five to the ridge, which is the highest part of a building, that makes the eaves very low. And you can see here, I can't get the windows to line up with the doors. It really is a little bit messy as a design. So when we have buildings that are looking to go within two meters of a boundary, and that is most of our buildings, we then recommend you go with something like this, which is our single sloping roof. We've got a rubber roof that we use on there to, slow, uh, to make that slope very slight. 2.5 at the high side, we can get it down to about 24.50 at the low side. Um, and that is gonna give you internally around about 2.2 meters, but every garden building company will vary depending on the thicknesses of timbers they use, their base design. But the, the overall rule is it's 2.5 meters if it's within zero to two meters. And this kind of design really utilizes all of the space allowed. And it's the kind of standard design that I'd be recommending if you're doing that. If you've got the luxury of coming away from the um, house by uh, two meters, or the boundaries by two meters as we're demonstrating here in this one you can see there we've got that nice nice gap of two meters well then we've got a slightly different rule that is now 2.5 on the eaves or the low point of a pen but we can go up to three meters on a, a, a pen building like this and going out and getting that extra height is really handy if you're going to use it maybe as a gym um, things like that. So the particularly gym is the big one um, sometimes for table tennis or darts it's nice to have that extra height and to come away two meters gives you on a, on a pen single sloping 2.5 to 3 and if we go to an apex well then that can be very impressive 2.5 eaves again so that can't go over 2.5 but you can make the ridge there up to four meters high Typically we don't go that, that tall, we normally go around three and a half meters and that looks really nice. But you can see here, you could have a very palatial, big uh, feeling of space, but you do need to come away from the boundaries by uh, two meters. Okay, so then the next question is, is where are these measurements taken from? So let's use this little plan drawing. I'm showing this as one of our bases, okay? So this is a kind of steel and timber frame base that we would produce. Um, the, we know now, we've had clarification that the 2.5 height from the ground is the highest ground area. So if you see in this particular drawing here, we're showing this kind of sloping ground with the level base on it. The 2.5 is taken here. So imagine this to be the front. When you go over here, the building might be 2.7 out of the ground, okay? That's totally allowed. It's the ground closest or the highest surrounding the building, so right next to the building. You can't go away three meters on a lump and then measure it from there. It must be surrounding the building. Now, another planning rule that you need to be aware of is, is you shouldn't be making a platform over 300 high. So I, again, we're showing that in this timber frame base that we would use. So we've got a 120 frame. And if we take that into those calculations you see there, we've kind of got about 180 millimeters. So if the, if the slope was, uh, the ground was sloping around 250 we're not going to be able to create the platform and get it level with the base being above ground so then you've got to start thinking about either lowering the base and bringing that into the ground um, kind of reducing the height of the building which is again we're balancing all these different things up um, or applying for planning because of that rule so that's two things in this drawing that i'm showing you the first thing is the 2.5 or the three meter or four meter rule for your building is going to be from the highest ground area but you should not be making a platform um, over 300 high. If we go back to this plan drawing, the next bit we need to think about is the size of the building. So planning say, you can build a building up to 50% of your garden. So if I use this kind of demonstration here, I'm gonna say not even that is 50%, it'd be an enormous building. So planning say, you can build a building up to 50% of your garden and you can put it absolutely anywhere, right against the boundaries. There's gonna be an interaction that I'm gonna talk about in a moment with with building control, building regulations, which is gonna kind of stop you doing some of these elements. But for now, just think about planning. The 50% of the garden is where, where we sit, okay? Now, the one other thing you need to think about when you're thinking about um, a garden building is how you're gonna use it. Planning only allow you to permit, permit these buildings in use for ancillary use to the house, not primary. They cannot be used as bedrooms. Uh, they can't be used technically, they can't be used as your kitchen or your primary lounge. You could have it as a secondary lounge, that's allowed. So things that are allowed, terminology we're allowed to use, summer house, gym, office, 
Um, those kind of things are fine. Cinema room, you know, any of those usages are fine. But if you're going to use it as a kitchen, a dining room, or particularly a bedroom where you're overnight, that is primary use of the house and not allowed. Some of it's just about terminology, but some of it is about the true use. You shouldn't be staying in these buildings um, overnight. Okay, so that's pretty much got everything done for planning permission. Just one thing I'd like to come back to is you can attach a buildings to the house so if I rescale that for a moment and you imagine that you've got a back of the house and you want to do you want to do something where we can attach that to the house that is allowed uh, but you do need planning permission so we can't we can do it but because of it's a material change it's not brickwork it's it, it's new materials you do need to get planning permission so we can attach our buildings to the house imagine that we could actually do an extension in your property under 30 square meters with planning and get it complete in less than three weeks so um, there are some pros of using these kind of um, uh, pre-made panels that we're producing here um, to do that so y you can attach to houses but it does need planning now I want to talk about uh, building control and its interaction with what we've just discussed now. Okay, so now let's talk about building regulations or building control. There are some things that are restricting how we can use the building and actually some sizes. So let's talk about those. I'm going to again go to that basic plan drawing to show you the, uh, the kind of big ones that get missed a lot. So do you remember that planning say you can build up to 50% percent of your garden and you can put it anywhere well that's okay but building control come in and say no no that's not quite right you can only build up to 30 square meters in an unregulated building and and over that needs to be regulated a regulated building is essentially a complete house build so imagine like a small bungalow that is full structural calculations proper foundations the whole works including building control coming at every element there aren't many garden building companies if any that I'm aware of that can produce those kind of buildings and the cost is elevated because of the restrictions that building control put on it so most garden building companies and particularly us here are very proud to offer unregulated buildings up to 30 square meters of internal space okay and that means we've got a freedom to do whatever we want put windows where we want and we use regulations just as our go-to kind of uh, recon reconciler for all the different kind of elements we do put safety glass in we try and hit some factors with the insulation and all those kind of things we use structural calculations for roof and snow loading nevertheless we don't need to it's just our choice to do that so you want to be sure when you're going out to the companies and looking at that is are they aware of building control in the regulations so the big ones when we're talking about the building is no bigger than 30 square meters of internal space so canopies are not included in that we can go bigger but internal space i kind of want to demonstrate this building here imagine that's 30 square meters and this one over here that we're just going to um, show now is 0 to 15 square meters so let's just imagine that this one here is 15 square meters building control say if the building is between 0 and 15 you can go anywhere in your garden so those rules completely align with uh, planning if your building is 0 to 30 square meters and imagine this this building here I'm moving around is 30 building control say that either needs to be a meter away from all boundaries let's place that around there okay we need that meter gap or these walls should be made of a non-combustible material now uh, here we can offer products that get around that issue and we are able then to put it close in there but you do even need to be a meter away or made of a non-combustible material okay so those, those are the two things if you may want uh, more than 15 square meters don't want to go to that cost of a uh, of a regulated building and what, what we can do here is we can do two buildings so if I take this one here let's say I make that 30 square meters as well okay um, I come away a, a, a bit there what we then do is we can put a secondary building in we want a meter gap between the two and then that is then allowed okay so we can do two buildings let's say you wanted a bit of an office and a bit of a games room or maybe a, a large room to enjoy with the family but also a storage shed which we could have combined uh, but that goes over let's just separate them out create a gap and therefore you're good to go so that's one way of kind of working around the rules and keeping within it um, now a couple of last things we need to be sure of is any electrics done in any garden building need to be part P signed off so you can either do a minor works and a self certification um, or, or you need to have a full blown uh, building control certificate it depends which way we go I won't bore you with all the details now but your electrics need to be part P you want that also because you want to insure the building and you won't be able to have any insurance uh, with, without that on there uh, plumbing 
Plumbing is allowed. People think that it's not allowed, but plumbing is allowed in our rooms. We do a lot of buildings with plumbing, and it's, uh, you know it w works very nicely. What, what you want to be thinking about with plumbing is is it's not what you're what what you're putting in the building. It's what you're doing with the building. So if you put a toilet and a shower in it because you're going to stay in it overnight and live in it, that's not allowed. But if, for instance, you're near a swimming pool and you want to have your shower and toilet um, there for, for after you swim, or if you want a self-contained office, you don't need to go into the house then toilets and basins, that's all allowed. You can see in this particular one here we've done for an office, we put a little kitchen in, toilet, basin, hot water, all of that is allowed. Um, it's outside of the scope of requiring building regulations or building control to be involved because the building's outside the scope. Um, so that's pretty much everything you need to know about building control and where it meshes uh, with, with, with planning. So those different things about the sizes of the building and the proximity to the walls, don't just look at planning, you need to understand the building regulations as well. Any garden building company that is selling you a building bigger than 30 square metres, it needs to be regulated. Ask them if it is. I wouldn't mind betting you find that it isn't. And then you're dealing with a company that's trying to sell you a building that is then essentially an illegal build. You could be told to take it down and I bet you find in the small print that the onus is on you. So just be aware of that. There are companies out there I'm aware of that sell buildings over 30 square meters that are unregulated. They should not be doing so. So that's where building regulations and planning mesh. Hope that makes sense. Um, and now let's go on to the summary part of this. Okay, in this summary part, I'm just going to quickly round up those things into a nice, neat little package that hopefully will help you. Let's go through that and just remind us of what we're allowed to do. So, if we go to our website, let's use these pictures there. If you want your building within zero to two meters, you see there where I'm circling it, zero to two meters away from the boundary, 2.5 maximum from the highest ground level around it. That's the same for apex and for pent buildings. There's your apex and there's your pent, okay? Remember, with, with an apex building, it makes the eave very low. If we've got the luxury of being more than two meters away uh, from the boundaries, then we can go 2.5 on the low side of a pent, or what we call in the eave, three meters on the high, and on an apex building, where it's more than two meters away, we're going 2.5 on the eaves and four meters on the ridge. If you're happy that your building works within those regulations, then let's just get on and build it and just go, go ahead and do it. You don't need any certification. You don't need paperwork. You may choose to get something called a permitted development certificate. That's a bit of paper to say from the planning office, I don't need planning, do I? That's good if you've got a bit of a, let's say, a nightmare neighbor um, and you just want to know they're going to complain anyway. Well, let's just get the paperwork in place first. And it's also good if you're doing an expensive uh, build. Some of our buildings with an endless swimming pool and all the ground works could be in excess of 130 to 150,000 pounds. You want to know that that's a total investment to the property so then you can go away and get your permitted development certificate um, to achieve that so that that, that I think is a, always a good idea if you're not sure check you don't want to invest uh, the kind of money um, the, of the summer houses and garden rooms that we offer and be unsure and personally we're always here on hand to help you um, we offer this as part of our complete package service um, and if you're interested you can always contact us through the website so I hope uh, that has helped um, give you a greater understanding of explaining the planning rules and the building regulations surrounding garden buildings. Um, there are some uh, confusions there, you can, so hopefully that's, that, that's really eradicated it. We can help that complete package that we have there on our website, the planning permission guide. There's a huge load more information on there, all written down for you, and hopefully that will explain a lot of what's going on. And right at the bottom of our page, we've actually put in where we get that information from. So the government planning portal is a link to that site so that can kind of confirm um, where we're getting this all from. So I hope that's worked for you. We've got a lovely show centre here at the uh, Bowley Grange Industrial Estate. If you want to come and see these buildings, all the different heights, we're producing all, all the time. So we've got a, we're going to have an extra height building. We're going to have the one at three metres to the 2.5. We've got a lot under the 2.5 rule. Come and have a feel. Come and see what we do. Keep up on our social media, particularly our YouTube channel is a really popular one. I uh, hope to see you at the show centre soon. I hope this has been helpful. Thank you.